and welcome to Cyril's Brettspiele. Cyril's Brettspiele. My name is Niels, this is Kathleen, and today we are talking about one of my favorite cities in the United States, <laughs> which it. is... Las Vegas. Oh, I'm dreaming. Mm. Already. Yeah, this time the card game. There was a real board game out there before. I think it's four or five years old, mm -hmm. so it's fairly it's, old. It's a fun one. I know that one hits the table a lot with uh, my, with people I game with. It's not uncommon, even after all that time. Five full years. It's really interesting. When I moved from Germany over to North America, mm -hmm. I remember you had another Vegas game out there from... Vegas Showdown? No, where you build up this mm -hmm. little... Is it Showdown? No, it's not Showdown. It's another one. Will you actually build your casino with all the different tiles? Yeah. Yeah. Is it Chodo? I think so. <sighs> I cannot. Anyway, so and everybody in my mm -hmm. old area played that one. And nobody knows this was a dice. Well, and that's the funny thing, though, because that one's, you know, about building your casino. This one you're actually gambling, which is doing what Vegas is famous yeah. for. And so I have no problem with building something, but it is a little weird that you're, like, building a casino, but you're like, I want it to feel like, a, you know, like I'm actually doing something Vegas style in this one. You actually do. So technically this is a di uh, card version mm -hmm. of the old dice version of uh, Vegas. Mm -hmm. So And as always, we are jumping right into the rules. And as always, Kathleen is my rule genie. Oh, I get to be like a Vegas girl, like... You can start dancing. However, <laughs> we are not watching that because we are just simply listening to your voice. Uh, it's a melodic voice. Just like Tom Jones or Britney Spears, the great voices of Vegas. Hello, and welcome to Las Vegas. What happens here stays here, or at least goes back in the box. Uh, Las Vegas is a game played in four rounds. You're trying to get the most money. You'll notice that there are six casinos here on the table, and randomly from the pile of money, you have two different denominations placed at each casino. So currently, the five casino, the Sphinx, has 80,000 and 90,000 up for grabs, whereas poor little number four here has 30,000 and 60,000. Certainly good money that can be won, but people, generally speaking, in Vegas terms, want to go after the big whale. So to demonstrate a hand for the game Las Vegas, each player has their own deck of cards, each deck of cards is the same, and they're going to deal out five cards um, for themselves. And for our purposes here, the cards are face up, but normally they're kept secret in your hand. You can see that blue has three fives, a double two, and a double six. Over here, green has two twos, a five, a six, and a one. And this is a simultaneous action selection game in which players can either choose one card of one number, two cards of different numbers, or if they have multiples of a number they can play as many as you want. So if I had a fourth five, blue could actually play all four fives onto one casino. And so what players will do is hold in hand what they want to play, and then one, two, three, they reveal. And so then they place their cards by the casino in which they want to place their bet. So currently, green is winning. They're actually tied in the money race for this particular casino. This is important to keep track of because anytime players have the same number of, of dice at a, any particular casino, they will cancel each other out and they won't have any option for scoring at that particular casino. So it's very important that you play higher or even lower than other players whose cards e um, can cancel each other out. So you play until all players have eight cards on the board of the, from, their, from their set. At the end of each round, you scoop them up, put them underneath your little cocktail glass, you deal out five more cards, and play continues where everybody chooses their cards, makes their selection, places them at the casino. When a player has eight cards of their color on the table, they're out for the rest of the round. Players finish up any remaining rounds that they need in order to put all their cards on there. At the end of four rounds, you count up who has the most money, and the game is over. Thanks so much for the great voices of Vegas. <laughs> uh, so we have definitely to add Vegas. one additional much. great voice. Mm. So who is Celine if you can have Kathleen? Right, exactly. Celine Dion? <laughs> or Kathleen? Kathleen Mercury. <laughs> Celine Dion, Kathleen Mercury. Uh, let me call Caesars <laughs> right now. Yes. Uh, but... 
before I'm calling uh, Caesars, let's talk about the game itself. Yes. Um, so, component-wise for me, uh, the cards are tiny. Mm -hmm. um, however, in this game I really like that because when you shuffle all the 30 dice cards, mm -hmm. I really like that. If you would have a bigger deck, is that really helpful? I think there's uh, there the, each player has their own deck of cards, um, and then you have your safe card, you have your little casino card, your little cocktail glass. The, the cards that I think could be a bit bigger would be the money cards as well as the dice rolling cards because when everything's kind of the same uh, size, when it's all on the, on the table, if some of the cards were bigger than others, it would make it easier to see the differences between the two types of cards, the three types of cards really. So and even if these cards where people stash theirs were a little bit bigger, um, especially for the money cards since those are secret, if it's bigger you wouldn't be able to see how many people, how many cards people had and that actually could be a strategic advantage. So you, you couldn't necessarily keep count as much. Interesting point because I haven't thought about that. In that case, I definitely would make uh, the money even tinier, like little cardboard tokens. Yeah, that would be really good. Uh, square t cardboard tokens mm -hmm. or rectangle cardboard tokens. Yeah. Flip it over and it's secret. Then you don't need the safe card anymore. Mm -hmm. And the casino tiles itself, big and huge. Uh, so that you can lay around the numbers right. and you still can see the casino card. So if you really wanted to make different sizes, right. uh, as, an, uh, as just a suggestion for the publisher, then you should right. do the uh, casino card big. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, dice cards are exactly the same size mm -hmm. and the money could be just little cardboard, right. punch board right. tokens. I think that would make a huge difference to the game. I understand why for manufacturing stamp purposes it's easier to have the same size of cards that you can get all of your print runs done, you know, the, the minimal number of sheets, but I think it wouldn't take that much, even if you didn't do the cardboard tokens, but just a few different card sizes here would make a big difference. It'd make it faster for setup too, so you wouldn't have them all mixed together. Oh, yeah. It'd make it really easy to see which yeah. is which. So it's understandable why they did, but I think those are changes, yeah, that would um, improve the game for sure. And I think there's some things you can do on your own, you know, as far as you know, if you wanted to, to like make your own cards or have a, you know, player generated play mat or something like that. There's things you could do, not super necessary, um, but if they do additional versions of this game, which, you know, I really do enjoy, um, then, you know, certainly that could be something to think about. And if you own the original dice game, mm -hmm. uh, there are bigger cards in it, so you simply can replace the casinos oh, with the bigger cards. There you go. So if you have both mm -hmm. cards. Um, however, that leads us directly to the critics of mm -hmm. the game, and in this case, I have to say my critics are, even if critics sounds negative, for me it's just positive, because honestly, I wasn't the biggest fan of the real uh, Las Vegas mm -hmm. uh, board game. Yeah. Dice rolling is always, ooh, I, you never know what you get out of a uh, mm -hmm. dice roll. Uh, here you have a distribution of exactly 30 cards, each right. player has exactly the same 30 cards, Okay, you still only draw five, I, I got that, mm -hmm. but you can easily count and think about, right. oh, I used already three fours, mm -hmm. so it does not make any sense for me to invest in casino number four anymore, right. and I did not saw any one so far, mm -hmm. probably I should go for the one, so there's a huge, tremendous... Right. Uh, the ability to plan. I think in this game especially because you know you're going to see every single card and I think for me that's something that um, unlike dice rolling if you just roll the same numbers over and over and over again you know you might be really frustrated but with this you know you will see all six numbers and that makes everything an option the whole time I think that's really interesting I had for whatever reason I had a little trouble just understanding like which card, how many cards you can play at the beginning and that's maybe just because I was tired it wasn't a big deal at all um, that was just me just being silly but um, but especially when you could count the number of cards that you played and other people played um, to know like you know for my for the second game we played or my last round I was the only person going to play cards that round everyone else had already put eight cards out on the deck so I just had my choice on what I wanted to do with the cards that I had in my hand. So that's something else that's a strategy for you. You can play a lot if you have the ability of a lot of the same numbers, but you also have the ability to play slowly, see where other people build up, and just hope that those big numbers are the doubles of, of the dice that those come later. So you do have 
a little bit of, a little bit more planning in this game I think that I like because especially Absolutely. if the, when there's just so much randomness I can get really frustrated and you do have the ability to like count cards a little bit which is kind of a fancy little skill for people to have in Vegas you know so not quite like blackjack but still what I really figured out either in the in the original or in this game it doesn't matter it's it's really an interesting phenomenon for me that this is a game you should not rush through. Mm -hmm. So you should hold your cards back, your dice back, and later in the game when everybody else played his card, mm -hmm. then you can shine. Then you can win with just one card, a huge pile of money. Mm. Uh, when you start off big and lay down five cards, you have only three more rounds, right. uh, and everybody else can outbid you after that, or at least try to tie up, and you get nothing, and all of that. Right. So it's really interesting to see this is a game, and you have to play that one time before you really understand that, because it's so um, uncommon for a game that you really wanted to be mm -hmm. the last person in play to have the full control right. of what you have. And you know, one thing that you could do, if you wanted to add a little bit more um, of a luck element to this, you know, especially considering, you know, it could get old perhaps. Do you, you really want to put more luck in it? Well, it's because especially if you, if you want like the dice rolling Vegas kind of experience, you know, if you have, you know, three players, there's cards for six, so you could just take two decks, you know, shuffle them together, and then what you get is what you get. So, it's for oh, it's for five. Okay, so if you're playing with two players, um... <laughs> Sometimes we play with six players. No, I'm kidding. Um, but if you're playing with two players, you can take two decks, mix them together, and then... Our ghostly friend. <laughs> yes, a little over there. Um, so that could add something to it. The one other thing I would say is, you know, as far as the players go, you know, you just have a man and a woman on the card, and then on the box you've got just kind of typical Vegas. You've got, you know, a woman in a swimsuit. I mean, obviously it's a showgirl and stuff like that. Um, it would be nice if they had a little bit more variant in the, variance in the art. You know, if they had um, representation of a, a wider range of people, I think that would be, for me, it would be nice to see. It would be a little bit more modern and forward-looking. Um, not anything that has anything to do with the play of the game. Um, I'm sure Europeans like the fact that the money is different colors and they can waggle their finger and say, ha, we were right, you know, that sort of thing about the color of the money. But I would like to see that the rep representation of people in the game was a little bit more diverse okay. in, in the depiction. You know, and I just, it just gets frustrating sometimes when it's the same thing over and over again. That's true, yeah. Um, I felt a little bit frustrated that there's not really a new mechanic, just in terms of when you read the rules, you think, oh, I know everything. Uh, but when you actually play it, because of it's a deck of cards, and you know exactly what uh, cards you can expect, at least after the first game, mm -hmm. it feels different. It feels different even if there's technically no real new mechanic in it. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting feeling for me. Right, and I think for me that's the reason why um, I would probably like, I mean, there's times we want to have just the fun of the dice rolling, just, you know, true Vegas style. Um, I mean, because it's just like when you hit it, it's the best thing ever. When you fail, oh, best thing ever. Um, but especially for this, though, like if you want to have that kind of experience where you're trying to, you know, just taking away the Vegas theme itself is really to try to lay claim to different areas, different higher, lower values on the board. Um, this makes it a completely strategic game. So even if people don't like the idea of Vegas gambling at all, then you can just ignore that. And it's just, I think, a really solid card playing game. It's, re it's really interesting that you mentioned the feeling of dice rolling mm -hmm. and real Vegas feeling. Uh, that was one of my critic points in the original game. They put normal dice in it. Mm -hmm. They should c uh, put uh, laser cutted dice in it. That would be cool. This acrylic, cool, yeah. big chunky dice. But they did not. Mm -hmm. So even if you play the original one, you don't have the feeling of being in Vegas. Mm. So uh, that's fine. Just to add on. Right. Uh, anyway, um, one interesting question I have for you. What do you think about the fun and replayability, especially the replayability of this game. How often would you play it before it's getting boring? Not in a row, in general. Well, I think for the price point and the size of it, I think, you know, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I mean, I've only played it, you know, one day, so there's that. 
Um, but I think this has like at least a decent enough amount of replayability in terms of like, you know, five, six, whatever, um, you know, times, which for me is enough to justify getting it. You know, I think one thing that's nice too about this is if you have gamers like Grandma shows up, you know, Aunt Agnes, she spends a lot of time at the casino with the girls, but she's not really into those kinds of games. You could play something like this. I don't have Grandma and I don't have Agnes, just so that you know. Gertrude, then. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Matilda. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think this the theme is appealing and accessible to people who don't play a lot of our games. And I think that's something... Our, our, our games! <laughs> Um, no, because I like, can't stop. We had some women come to a board game meetup, and they had never heard of anything. They thought we were going to play Scrabble. We played Can't Stop with them, and they loved it. We ran out and bought it for the grandkids, you know, and that's awesome. I think something like this has a wide appeal for a lot of gamers, yeah. and non-gamers alike, because, you know, people like the idea of winning money, and people like the idea of Vegas, and unless you don't gamble, but that's a whole other episode I guess but yeah but then probably you would never pick out a <laughs> game true. out of the shelf where the name Vegas is on right with a girl in a bikini oh, I'm just kidding I'm just kidding I, I, it doesn't bother me I just would like to see boys in bikinis too so there's that ah uh, but either case and there uh, are no in Vegas no so if you really mm -hmm. visit Vegas mm, depends on how where you look Point. maybe in some shows but not in the casino itself mm. some is, is there a special casino just for girls oh my Anyway, okay. <laughs> I like it when Nils gets sexist. It's adorable. Um, just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, um, you're, you're very modern. You're very pro women. Woo. Okay, so my point is, um, I think this game would appeal to a lot of people. I think it drives this, me crazy. I think this game would appeal to non-gamers because it's simple enough for them to learn, get the hang of it, play. And I think there's enough interesting decisions in the time that you play it. Um, for more serious gamers to definitely consider adding this to their collection and having it hit the table. Yeah, that's a very good point and I like to talk to my grandma right now if mm -hmm. she's interested in... What was your grandma's name? Uh, both of my grandmas are dads. So. so are mine, great, we're all sad now. What is? What were their names though? Oh gosh, that's German names that they don't even can... Oh, I thought you were acting like you could remember. Virginia and Teresa. Virginia and Teresa? No, that's not mine. Mm -hmm. Any, <laughs> anyhow, okay, uh, yeah, so I think we are almost done. Just let's go over to recommendation, not recommendation. For me, it's a good game. I really like it. So um, I would say um, for the price point, it's definitely worth it to put it in your collection. Mm -hmm. uh, it's far more fun than it looks like on the first look. Oh, agreed. Um, so therefore, there's no really reason to say, don't buy it. No, go and buy it. Yeah, that's a good one. Play it if you don't want to, just to be sure, but this is one that uh, I think you'll be okay. Uh, one addition to that, I really like it with more people, so it's probably a game for four or five, for a group of four or five players, yeah. more over two or, or three. Uh, that would be probably mm -hmm. not what I recommend it for. Right. You know, did we, did we talk about how messy the game is? No. Oh, good point. This is the one big... And, and we talked about before the video about, well, we should point that out. Yeah. So because of all of the cards on the table, you know, players playing eight cards each, so in a five-player game, you know, you've got a lot... Five of, times eight is 40. 40. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, doch. Um, plus the money, plus the casinos. Plus the casinos, plus the money. Um, the money. <laughs> the what? Oh, yes! Oh, my, my, my students are here, they'll be like, what? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> making it rain. Um, it, 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 there's a lot that happens on the table. I mean, this is a pretty big, substan substantial table that we're playing on. And when you put all the cards out there, it just gets to be kind of a mush. This is where the bigger cards would certainly come, into ha come in handy um, for that. But just know, if you play this, expect to play it on a very comfortable table, sir, um, table for everyone because it all just gets kind of mushed in there so that's something good good that you mentioned that we we talked about that before mm -hmm. the video and uh, we, I, yeah. I at least completely forget it. Right. Well, and the thing is, is the, it's really colorful. Like, each player has their own color cards. The casinos, they have their own color card. The money is different colored. Um, so Vegas style. Vegas style, right. So there's so much happening. 
<laughs> There's so much happening on the table that it's easy to see because they're distinctly colored, but there is just a lot yeah. of it. It made me laugh a little bit because, you know, Vegas itself can be so, like, visually oh. striking, you know. So I'm like, well, in that case, it is kind of like Vegas on the table. But it's so a big table. Um, if I would start with my first experience from Vegas, probably that takes another 30 minutes. Right. But I should at least tell you the story next time. Ooh. Just, yeah, it's a, I, hey, when I came from Germany and mm -hmm. came to it, in Germany, everything is recommended. Mm -hmm. You cannot easily put up a huge, gigantic LED TV on the street, right on the street. In the middle of the night, you see complete movies on that. There's a pirate ship and shooting at you when you're driving by on the strip. That's insane for a German guy. Anyway, uh, we we discuss it later on. So, <laughs> Socks and sandals. That's weird, too. Let's talk about that. Uh, that was Las Vegas, the card game. It was the casino, gazinos. Gazinos? The gazino. Well, how do you say it? Casino. Casino. From Ravensburger and Alea. And it was another episode of Cyril's Bettspiele with... Cyril's Bettspiele, Kathleen Mercury. And Niels. And another table dwarf. See you next time. Bye-bye, guys. Tschüss. Moin.